Hi, once again let me continue the pile foundation and we are uh, discussing uh, pile foundation various aspect and then uh, I have just stopped in my last lecture that uh, pile capacity and that to pile capacity of single pile and again that to restricted to uh, pile capacity of single pile and that is that to uh, in driven in sand. So, that is the very specific that means, single pile driven in sand what would be the capacity how to determine that somehow I have done something and let me continue from there and to uh, discuss about that point and then next to that I will take uh, capacity of the pile driven in clay also. So, uh, for this uh, uh, let, let me see the first slide and perhaps we have discussed that we have uh, uh, discussed uh, that uh, Q will be equal to uh, Q S and Q F uh, sorry uh, Q S means Q S or F that is friction or skin and Q T that means tip and Q tip will be nothing but uh, and Q S will be I uh, have shown that detail uh, procedure and Q T will be nothing but uh, Q multiplied by uh, uh, base area. So, area A tip and to find out Q that is bearing capacity at the base of the footing we have shown that uh, that same bearing capacity formula that means, C n C plus gamma d f n q plus half gamma b n gamma or 0.3 b gamma n gamma or 0.4 b n gamma uh, b gamma n gamma that uh, depending upon strip circular and uh, square. And then and we have seen that uh, that compared to that your uh, surcharge uh, that we are uh, that since we have considered only uh, pile driven in sand that C n C part is absent and then between uh, surcharge part and unit weight part again we have seen that the unit weight part again that will be very very uh, it may, may become negligible because of the uh, small size uh, compared to the surcharge uh, component. So, because of that we uh, decided to ignore that half gamma uh, half gamma or 0.4 gamma or 0.3 gamma uh, b n gamma that component we have ignored then ultimately q will be having equal to uh, uh, is nothing initially will be q will be equal to gamma uh, d f in q and then this uh, gamma d f actually d f is the depth of embedment and if there is a pile something like this and as I have we have discussed that uh, that uh, your uh, pressure the lateral pressure uh, instead of uh, increasing linearly it will increase up to some depth and then it will become constant. So, that is why we have considered that instead of gamma d f we have decided to take uh, that uh, gamma d c. Okay. So, so that is actually it is in general term sigma v dash t that is nothing but gamma c uh, gamma d c and then n q whatever n c n q n gamma we have got in uh, shallow foundation and since uh, that uh, deep foundation because of so much of confinement that failure pattern here will be something different than the shallow foundation and as a result this uh, bearing capacity will be more. How to reflect that? That n q must be greater than that. So, that is why the n q whatever we have got from the shallow foundation here n q will be uh, big, uh, larger and that n q instead of n q now we are using n q star. Uh, to differentiate from uh, bearing capacity of shallow foundation n q. So, that means, sigma v dash t. So, that means, whatever pressure here, here also same pressure that is why you, we are writing in general sigma v dash t n q star and sigma v dash t is nothing but gamma times d c that is what already we have discussed before and n q will be replaced by n q star. So, how to find out n q star? you are not going in detail only thing whatever recommended by the past researcher and for calculation that I will show and which can be used. So, for that 
let me go to the next slide and you can see that different people actually gave uh, that bearing capacity factor n q star versus angle of internal friction phi and you can see that Tarjagi gave this value uh, where it is le less that which is very conservative and Berejonote is given this value, Meyerhoff given this value, Hanjen is given this value, these are the different curves of n q with the phi value. So, ultimately uh, uh, it is suggested that anywhere actually if you draw an average line that can be taken as n q star. Sometimes some people also given in the tabular form. So, from in here in between these two curve anywhere we can suppose from this phi equal to 42 degree according to this we are getting some value or according to this subnic value. So, in between average value can be taken. So, that means n q star can be obtained from this chart or somewhere there will be available in the form of table also that can be also utilized. So, in the exam generally if this type of problem is there then only n q value will be given you do not have to worry about it. So, so ultimately that means your uh, bearing capacity uh, or uh, capacity of a single pile will be uh, 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 skin friction uh, re, re part and then uh, your tip resistance part and uh, friction part we have shown how to de 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 find out and tip part how to find out the both we have shown. Now, if, if we add together and then then you will get the actual capacity ultimate capacity of the uh, single pile driven in sand. So, that one uh, let us uh, go to the next slide you can see this is the thing we have shown. So, from here to here from here to here this part actually because of this is you can say q s or q f both sometimes we are using q s means skin friction and f means only friction. So, both are same either q s or q f and this is actually q t and how to get this one actually we have shown already one second I will repeat uh, so that it will be easy to understand for you. So, I, I have shown the uh, uh, pile here and then uh, I have to draw the uh, lateral pressure diagram and then a vertical pressure to lateral pressure. So, pressure diagram will be something like this and if it is so uh, then what how you can do it I can take a small element here and on that element actually you see suppose at a depth z at a depth z. So, it will be sigma will be uh, gamma times uh, uh, gamma sigma will be gamma times z okay. and if you multiply it by k then it will become lateral pressure and then if you multiply by d z. So, that become force and then uh, you have to uh, multiply the friction. So, you have to multiply by tan delta to get the actual frictional resistance force multiplied by tan delta and we are cal we I have con considered one point here, but if you consider around, around the pile, but around the pile entire uh, uh, area, uh, perimeter then what you have to do is number of points actually there instead of considering one, one each. So, we can multiply to consider the entire perimeter I can multiply by pi d and so these are actually. Uh, so, these are these are the things. So, what are this is the variable only z is variable. So, it will be gamma then k then tan delta then pi and d all will be uh, all will be constant. So, I will take out an integral sign z d z and that suppose 0 to d c. So, so that means, this is d c and if you see if you multiply if you integrate then it becomes z square by 2. So, ultimately d c square by 2. So, you can see gamma d c square by 2 multiplied by k tan delta pi d whatever is there. So, this part so I up to this up to this by this integration is coming that is gamma d c square by 2 k tan delta pi d and for from here to here how to get that will be equal to that is if total length is l if the total length is l. So, l minus d c that will be there and here actually pressure is constant gamma times d c and then k then tan delta we are doing and then that is one point we have considered and since it is a constant. So, what you can do 
uh, we, uh, so, so, gamma d c. So, at, at any point actually gamma d c into k tan delta is a friction and then if I consider entire uh, perimeter then you have to multiply again pi d and then and to consider from here to here. So, you have to multiply by length since it is a constant no nothing everywhere it will be same. So, simply you multiply by l. So, l, l here actually l minus d c. So, it will be l minus d c. So, this part so from here to here from here to here it is actually l minus d c multiplied by uh, uh, gamma d c and tel k tan delta and then pi d of course, will be there and you can see l minus d c is there here gamma d c gamma d c is here here l minus gamma d c and k tan delta pi d it is common for both. So, because of that it is kept outside otherwise. So, I can I can instead of remembering this in the form of formula simply I can consider this is one part one I can consider this as part of put two. So, this is part one and this is part two and if you sum it then you get from here to here that is q s and then this part is you can see uh, here actually uh, sigma at the pile tip is gamma times d c as I have mentioned that it has to be restricted up to critical at uh, beyond critical depth and so gamma d c time in q star is the uh, your uh, q that is uh, that is actually q base q t and then if you multiply by the area then you are getting the q t. So, these two together ultimately your uh, ultimate bearing this is actually q ultimate. Uh, this is actually q ultimate. So, q ultimate become summation of q s and q t. So, how to find out that I have shown here. Now, if there is in between uh, 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 if there is a water table up to surface then instead of gamma it has to be used gamma submerged and suppose if the water table is over surface if it is somewhere here then up to this full gamma to be taken and beyond this you have to take gamma submerged. So, because of that corresponding pressure diagram you have to do and then you have to integrate maybe in 2 and 3 parts. So, that part will show you the numerical example otherwise the, uh, the up to uh, critical depth your lateral pressure will vary linearly and beyond that it will be constant. So, this part actually your friction will be different at different depth. So, because of that to get the effect cumulative effect you have to integrate it because at different depth different values. So, uh, so you can uh, imagine that infinitely small uh, depth you consider at that depth you calculate what is the friction like that can you can add and so if you want to add those things small small things what is the best way to do by integration. So, that is the thing we have done here uh, by this and this part actually since is constant so surface area and what and uh, friction actually it constant throughout the depth here what is that gamma d c time k times tan delta is a constant. So, constant pressure multiplied by cylindrical surface. So, cylindrical surface is how much L minus d c multiplied by pi d. So, that is the surface and this is the uh, friction. So, that if you multiply then it, if you add to then you will get the q t. So, this is the way to be estimated. So, you have to if you uh, see some numerical problem perhaps it will be further it will be clear. So, uh, let me uh, see next slide. So, now actually uh, we have done already pile driven in sand. So, q ultimate we have got and uh, if you want to get q allowable that is q allowable generally uh, q ultimate divided by factor of safety and for single pile uh, for single pile when you cal calculate the ultimate and to get the allowable generally we use factor of safety equal to 2. So, you can just half whatever estimated value will come half of that will be taken as the allowable value and that to be used in the design whereas, in shallow foundation bearing capacity bearing capacity factor actually uh, factor of safety we use in bearing capacity of shallow foundation between 2.5 to 3 not less than that until unless it is specified less important problem. So, that will be less value will be used otherwise. Uh, shallow foundation factor of safety 2.5 to 3 whereas, this type of problem single pile when I want to find out allowable pressure or allowable load 
then q ultimate divided by factor of safety and that factor of safety is 2 per single pile. Now, let us take pile driven in uh, clay soil again uh, it will have two component that is uh, q ultimate will be equal to uh, q f plus q t both will be there and so q f nothing but q f friction here actually friction multiplied by a surface. Suppose, if there is a uh, friction pile is like that and you have friction like this and friction like that. So, f is constant throughout the depth then what I will do I will find out the area of the surface area of the pile what is the surface of the pile. So, surface area pi multiplied by d is the perimeter multiplied by l this is the surface area and multiplied by f that become your uh, q f and see a pi d l here actually it is written as a surface. So, a surface multiplied by f and a f actually uh, most of the time for cohesive soil will be taken constant unlike uh, in granular soil or sand that uh, the friction is since uh, friction depends on the lateral pressure normal pressure. So, frictional force will be depend will depend on what is the normal force here and so normal force actually this in the normal direction force will be nothing but lateral pressure and that lateral pressure depends on what is the vertical pressure and we know vertical pressure with depth is uh, changing. So, because of that lateral pressure also changing and then friction also change. So, granular soil actually we have taken linear variation of friction after of course, d c uh, uh, critical depth we have taken constant, but up to at least d c we have seen linear variation we have taken, but when cohesive soil we take that friction is constant throughout the depth and which is nothing but alpha times c. We can take c value actually alpha times c is actually c is the c is the undrained, undrained shear strength undrained shear strength of the soil shear strength of the soil c is nothing but undrained shear strength of the soil and if you do suppose unconfined compression test if you get q u that by 2 is the c c will be q u by 2. So, if it is a unconfined compression test if you get q ultimate from there you divide by 2 then you will get the c. How to get this one I have discussed or you have learned from soil mechanics. So, I will not go in that point. So, the so c is nothing but undrained shear strength of the soil and that actually that is c is nothing but adhesion between the soil and pile and that entire value can give you the frictional resistance, but uh, we generally modify this adhesion by a factor called alpha and this alpha always less than 1 and this value alpha how to find out that I will show you in the next slide and this purpose of using the alpha is during actually driving the pile actually your the soil will be disturbed and then addition uh, fact addition and to the uh, with between the soil and pile may not be as good as it was uh, uh, without uh, uh, before driving. So, because of that it generally reduce it and how to reduce it that I will show you in the next slide. You can see here that to calculate the addition factor alpha this is alpha and this is a q ultimate. Okay unconfined compression strength this is unconfined compression strength and this is alpha and that actually de depending upon that and uh, uh, so what we can take if it is a value of in, in the in this unit of course tons per this chart is given in a particular unit that means q should be in tons per feet square and accordingly if it is 1 ton square feet square or 2 ton square feet square or 3 ton square feet square then accordingly you can see you can produce on to the different curve to get the all addition factor. So, here the addition factor you are getting here if you use this value this is the value you are getting if you use this one you get this one if you use this one you get different addition factor you get, but this is the lowest limit uh, some uh, barb deposit steel pile and steel pile combination if you use this is the uh, alpha value to be taken otherwise the this is the highest range this is the lowest range and most of the time you can draw an average line and based on that you can calculate the we can assume uh, you can est we estimate the alpha value to be taken. So, if you see 2 tons per and if you produce here 
it comes around 0.55. Okay. So, the C value will be 5.55. So, accordingly you have to uh, if the C if your C value is uh, if your C value is 100 and alpha value is actually uh, 0.5 then your F become 0.5 into 100 means 50 and 50 multiplied by A surface will give you uh, sorry 50 Q S will become 50 multiplied by A S. Okay. Next one uh, you can see now we have to find out the second component that is uh, q tip equal to q tip will be equal to q multiplied by a tip and you can see now that uh, uh, if you uh, uh, look back bearing capacity formula then general bearing capacity formula c n c plus gamma d f plus uh, uh, 0.4 gamma b and gamma that part was there and since it is a clay and for clay actually you can see uh, for phi that will phi equal to 0 then n q will be 1 and n gamma equal to 0. So, the of that this part will be 0. So, it is not shown here and n q is 1. So, it is gamma d f n q supposed to be there. So, I have not written that only gamma d f I have written. So, that means your uh, when the pile driven in clay so, q at the base will be C n c plus gamma d f and again this gamma d f part and if you compare with the C n c part it will be small. So, sometime it will be ignored. So, ultimately q tip for pile driven on clay we generally base resistance we consider as C n c C times n c that means, if you know the cohesion of the soil and then multiply by n c then we will get the q value at the base and then you multiply uh, then if you want to find out q t then it will be c n c multiplied by a t that means, c n c times pi by 4 d square. So, this is the way q t can be obtained. Now, uh, you can see now c n c and we have uh, seen bearing capacity uh, equation bearing capacity theory in shallow foundation there we have got bearing capacity value n c n q n gamma for phi equal to 0 some what are the values are there and when it is c equal to uh, when phi equal to 0 then your n c value uh, when phi equal to 0 that means, for clay n c value is 5.4 5.1 for shallow foundation. So, 5.1 actually given by Meerhoff and uh, 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 others and basic and whereas, 5.71 given by so, we are taking uh, generally we take 5.1 most of the time. Uh, uh, so, uh, lower value we take 5.1. So, in con conventionally when phi, phi equal to 0 we take n c value 5.1 for shallow foundation. Whereas, when it is a deep foundation that is pile foundation particularly single pile then it will be a deep foundation and for that actually n c value like unlike uh, uh, like n q value whatever there in the shallow foundation and in the deep foundation n q value also replaced by n q star which is uh, higher than the n q value in the shallow foundation. Similar to this n c value also for deep foundation will be different not the same value and so that what is the different value that different value is actually n c equal to 9 to be taken. So, that means, n c value can be uh, so I can write actually uh, q equal to nothing but I can directly I can write q at the base nothing but 9 times c better to write. So, I do not have to remember separate, separate, separately. So, 9 times c and then if I want to find out q t then 9 times c multiplied by pi d square by 4. So, this is q t. So, this is q t I have shown q f. So, this if you put together that become ultimate capacity of the pile when driven in clay. So, here actually already f is the unit friction, c is the addition and alpha is the addition factor. So, this addition here actually for cohesive soil is nothing but uh, your cohesion only and, and for soft clay alpha equal to 1 and for steep clay alpha equal to alpha less than 1 for soft clay why it is 1 
because if you uh, disturb immediately will regain when it is steep clay when it is disturb when it will dri during dive driving it will be disturbed and regaining that c value again it will take longer time. So, because of that alpha value always for steep clay will be less than 1 whereas, if it is soft clay it can be taken as 1 or close to 1. So, uh, you can see now uh, we, we put together and then your equation become something like that q become alpha c uh, n c pi d l. So, this is actually nothing but f and this is n c which is can be written as 9 and pi d l this is nothing but a surface and c n c this also can be written as 9 c and this pi d square by 4 means it is a tip. Okay. So, this is the ultimate. So, this is actually q ultimate and again if you want to find out allowable pressure or allowable load you have to use a factor of safety of 2. Now, uh, this is the uh, capacity estimation. Now, if you have a capacity of a pile, but if you do not apply the full loading then how it will what will happen or what is the load transfer mechanism. So, like that if you uh, q ultimate if you put q ultimate then your actual resistance will be coming from friction and at the tip, but if you apply so q ultimate is a value of q and if you apply a load q 1 which is much smaller than the q ultimate in that case your load distribution along the length will be at the surface will be this much q 1 and at this actually it will be 0 and at the base actually no load will be there and this up to this depth this much depth pile will be ineffective. Similarly, if you increase from q 1 to q 2 then it may have q 2 value here and 0 here then this much depth will be ineffective and when you will be reaching to q ultimate actual ultimate then you will have the ultimate here and at this point there will be some value which will be equal to q s. Okay. So, this is the typical uh, load transfer mechanism in the pile and you can see here uh, that when is a uh, end bearing that we if you apply, apply load here and it is supported from here it is like a uh, it is like a uh, axial member. So, if I apply if I pull then entire pull will be taken by this pile at any cross section it will be p by area will be the stress or if I push them they are also cross sectional area of anywhere if you take your stress in the pile across uh, in the pile will be p by area. So, that thing same thing that means throughout the depth it will be uh, q ultimate will be there q anywhere if you cut it will be q ultimate and that means pressure will be q ultimate by area and because of that you can see q in the pile throughout the depth it will be same and friction over the depth is 0 almost. So, no, nothing is divisible and load displacement curve will be something like that. And instead of that if you take a friction pile then you can see that uh, friction pile you will have uh, uh, maximum q would be here and that means, if you consider a pile here and it is friction developed throughout the depth suppose like this and I, I want to I want to find out at this depth what is the uh, load because of the q friction. So, that means, I have to integrate only this much depth. So, that means your load will be this much, but when I will go what is the load up to this depth because of your uh, friction then you have to integrate over the entire depth. So, because of that you will have larger value. So, that means q friction will be maximum at the surface and it will be decreasing and it will be 0 at the tip and similarly screen friction also generally we have taken that it is linearly varying like that, but it may not be like that. So, it will be some curved one it will be 0 at the surface and it will be maximum at the base and load settlement typically will be like this. Similarly, if I take a general type of one first one whatever I have shown that is partially friction and fractionary uh, end bearing then your q will be here shown will be quite high and it will be at, at the base which will be seen this is equal to q tip actually and uh, your this will be q tip and this variation uh, this is actually frictional component at up to this depth. If I go here this is the frictional component up to this depth and uh, this is the frictional component up to this depth. So, frictional component this, this is the part and your tip resistance this is the part 
and typically skin friction will be varying like this and load settlement curve will be something like that. So, this is the typical load transfer mechanism that means, this is the load uh, uh, this is a uh, your this is a pile which is having both uh, uh, end bearing and friction and it has a q ultimate suppose some 100 and if I simply apply only 10 kilo newton load then the, the the pile will be loaded up to this depth that is the point I wanted to make here and if you slowly increase 20 it will go little deeper if you make 50 it may go little deeper when you will reach 100 then only you will get a load distribution curve like that then the pile a load will be shared by the entire length of the pile whereas if you put much smaller than the capacity then the partially low pile will be loaded partial length e rest of the length remaining length will be idle uh, with this i'll stop here thank you